In this video, we're going to discuss improper integrals with infinite discontinuities. This is a little bit more tricky than the case with infinities. It's just a little bit more delicate. So throughout everything here, we'll assume that f is continuous. And let's say we have uh, the improper integral, or the integral from a to b, of f of x with respect to x. And in the first case, we'll assume that uh, b is an infinite discontinuity. We'll assume f is continuous everywhere else. So if, there if there's a discontinuity at b, what you do, assuming you know a is less than b, is you replace the b with a variable, so like c. And then what you do is you have to let c approach b but from which direction? So here's the thing. I always like to draw a picture. So here's A, here's B, and then here's C. So we're approaching B. Oh, so we're approaching from the left. You see, so if you draw a picture every time, it really helps clarify your thinking. I suppose you could think about it. If C is a number between A and B, and B is bigger, then obviously C is approaching from below or from the left. Personally, I like to draw the picture every time and say, okay, here's C, we're approaching B. Oh, okay, we're approaching from the left. As a simple example, let's say we had, um, let's see, the integral from um, 0 to 3 of 1 over x minus 3 dx. So in this case, there's a problem at the number 3. So what you do is you write this as the limit, and you can use any letter you want. In the formula, I use C, so I'll stick to C. I usually use B, though, for everything. So we're going to approach 3. So here is 0, here is C, and then here is 1 over x minus 3 dx. So how do you know which direction to approach from? Well, you can say, okay, well, it must be from below because it's up top. That's one way to do it. Another way is to draw the picture. So here's C, and you're approaching from the left. Oh, okay, so from the left. So I like to have the picture every time when I do these. It just makes it easier for me to see what's going on. Two, say we have the same thing, A to B, f of x, dx. Okay, and let's say this time A is an infinite discontinuity. New, new, I'll just put discount. <laughs> so as before, we replace a with a variable. Let's use c. We keep the f. We keep the dx. Okay, so we're approaching a. So c is approaching a from the right. So if you can't see that, what you can do is draw a picture. So here's a. Here's b. C is always in the middle. Oh, okay, and C is approaching A. Oh, okay, so it's approaching from the right. You see, the picture always tells you everything. That's why I like the picture. Let's do an example of this. Let's say we have the integral uh, from 2 to 4 of 1 over x minus 2 dx. So in this case, there's an infinite discontinuity at 2. So what we would do is we would put the limit sign here. And we have the definite integral. Let's replace the 2 with the C. Again, you can use any letter. I typically use B. I'm only using C now because uh, the formula is all you see, because B is already reserved for something else. And then C approaches 2. So if you're not sure which direction it approaches from, you can just draw a picture. So here's 2, here's 4, here's C. C is always in the middle. Oh, yeah, look, it's approaching from the right. Boom. So. I always just draw the picture every time. I don't memorize uh, these formulas. I think it's too too much work to have to memorize these. I think it's a terrible idea. Um, so two ways I recommend doing it. Method one, you think about it and say, okay, so I'm approaching C and it's up here, and so I must be approaching from below. Okay, so from the left. Method two, you draw a picture, and the picture always tells you uh, which way to approach. I, I think the picture is better. It's uh, less thinking. Three. Uh, let's say we have uh, something like this, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. 
And I guess the last case would be is if we have some infinite discontinuity somewhere between A and B. So to say C is an infinite discontinuity and it's somewhere between A and B. So in this case you just break it up at C. So you go from A to C, f of x dx, and then here you go from C to uh, B, f of x dx. And then how do you do these? Well, in this case you do the first formula, in this case you do the second formula. So it's really tough, it's a lot of work. Um, so both of these turn into limits uh, using the formulas above. Very similar to the case with um, infinities. So in 1 and 2, we say the integral converges if the limit on the right-hand side exists. So the limit on the right-hand side exists. So what does it mean for it to exist? It means it has to be equal to a number. So if it's equal to a number, uh, then we say the limit exists, and then we say the integral converges. If it's equal to like infinity or negative infinity or something that doesn't make sense, then we'll say that the integral uh, does not converge. In other words, we'll say it diverges. So otherwise, uh, it diverges. So otherwise, it diverges. And again, I think these are harder than the ones uh, with infinities. In the videos that follow, you'll see, you'll see some examples. Um, three, so three, three converges if both, so if both integrals, so they both have to converge, if both integrals on the right-hand side converge. So they both have to converge. So if one of them diverges, the whole thing diverges. That's very useful in mathematical proofs because if you show divergence of one, the whole thing diverges, game over, and you're done. It's great. Otherwise, it diverges. It diverges. Wow, this video took over seven minutes. I guess we did do some examples here of how to write it. And again, I think the picture is just my opinion. I think it's the best method uh, because that'll always tell you the direction just from a quick little picture. I hope this video has been helpful. In the videos that follow, you'll see uh, many, many examples of actually using these formulas. Take care.